Good evening, everyone. It's Potmos, and tonight you to join me as we are going to start with Sumerians. And it's a funny little city builder in the age of the Sumerians. And if you know a tiny bit about history, you should know that uh, the Sumerians are the ones that basically invented farming. Now, of course, invention is a little bit of a weird word in this case, but it is a big change in human life. We went from uh, people that moved around all the time to settled down people. And it's one of the two big revolutions we had as humankind. The agrarian revolution and the industrial revolution. So it should be fun. Now let's go to start up and don't... We're gonna start up a new game. So uh, let's see what we can do. Now there's basically, if we check it, you can do a whole campaign. But there's lots of mission. I've done a few to get a hang of the game and to know what uh, I was doing. But uh, we're just gonna load up a free game. And if you're gonna start a free game, you can select these different zones. You can say how big the area is. You can also pick a starting area if you take a small medium or large if you have the large one then you just get the whole map so that's pretty easy you can see how well the area is for soil science trade and stuff this is actually a hard map there's all these different types of maps that you can play on which is really interesting now the question of course for this game is what should we do should we make it super easy should we go for a little bit harder or just medium i don't really know um, I might say we'll do just easy, not very easy, but we'll do easy. It'll be some challenges, but not too hard. And we're going to play with the tech tree, of course. We're going to pl not play in free mode. We actually want to, uh, to get things going. And uh, we're going to play on this large map. So let's load it up. That might take a little while. It takes a little while to load up a game, but after it's loaded, we'll have a lot of fun. In other words, they were too lazy to keep packing their tents up. <laughs> well, or they were so inspired to do a lot of things that they thought we're not just going to spend all of our life packing up our tents, moving, packing out our tents and sitting there for a few weeks. We want to do something different with our time. And therefore, they invented a way to keep staying at the same time. So they had have a lot of free time on their hands to do different things, which is not true, basically. But uh, let's see. All right, here we are. This is our little map that we have. We can see it is uh, quite large. We have a big area where we can build, um, which is nice, I think. Hopefully we can get to build a nice big town. There's these different corners that we could start. I believe we can start everywhere. So we can either start on this side or here or here. I think uh, we could start here, maybe. This, the greener the land, the more fertile it is. So that's a good thing to know. This is our first warehouse and we have to place that in order to actually start the game. So um, I'm going to place this and then immediately pause the game. And if you ever play this game, I advise you to do the same. And I will tell you soon why. But first, let's take a look at this. But also I have to keep my eyes on the chat. Good evening, Esser Naspirol III. Nice of you to join us. I hope all is well with you. What a cool name you have. I hope I pronounced it well, but uh, I have no clue. Um, as we see the warehouse here, we can see some people standing in front of it. There's a few animals. I know, happen to know that those are donkeys. And if we click it, we can see that we have some grain. But that's all that we have. We have grain and that's it. So we'll have to start setting up a nice and thriving little village. I bet that a big part of the reason agriculture started was to underwrite drunken. <laughs> well, probably. Alright, so how does this game work? Well, some buildings you really have to build, others you just have to assign them to. Um, so here we have the zoning areas. Like if you play games like City Skylines and stuff, you'll know all about zoning. We get to zone housing, farmland for the ha people, uh, fishing, we can do workshops for the people and we can get market stalls. Now, the uh, the whole idea is uh, that you assign housing, of course. So that's where the people will live. So let's assign a little area for some housing. Not too big, not too small. Now, those people will need to go to the market. So we'll assign a few market stalls here. Those people will also want to work on the farms. And the interesting thing with this game is... 
You don't have to provide food for your people. One of the base mechanics in this game is acquiring grain, but it's not for food for the people. The people will grow their own food on their own farms. They have to be placed on fertile land, so this is not fertile enough to place a farm. But if we want to, we can just place a few farms here for them to work on, and they will provide their own food. What we need to do is provide enough grain or grow enough grain to pay all the workers that are going to work for us, the state. We are the state. That's the whole purpose of this game right now. So what we need to do is we need to attract people. They need to grow their own food. They need a job to do. So we could give them uh, some workshop space, for instance, so that they can actually do a job. And then we have we need to get enough people that we can use people on state-run farms where they will grow our food. Now, in order to build these things, you don't need anything. If we unpause now, you will see houses erupt immediately. But all of the other things in the building menu require one thing, which are named builders. So we'll have to build a house that can have builders in it. Now, you can see by the radius in that whole blue area, that's where they can build. So if we later on construct something up here, we have to build another builder's house. But this will do in the beginning of the game. So let's start right there. We need that builder's house. And another thing you need, and that's why I did not unpause so far, is to try and get your hands on a farm as soon as possible. Because you need to get a state-run farm in order to grow your own uh, wheat for payment for your workers. And if we click this, we can see that the small warehouse will now house two workers as soon as they are available and we need to pay them in grain. And the more buildings we have that are state run, the more grain we need. And we don't have that much. We'll actually run out quite quickly. So we'll have to make sure that we get a farm as soon as possible. Now, another thing we want to get, of course, if we get a farm is a field. So let's set up a big farm field, the biggest that we can, so that as soon as the farm is built, they can start to sow this in. But there's a little catch, and we're going to get into that. Here we can see the calendar, and we can see it is now month one, which is here. They can only harvest in this month. In the next five months, they can either, four months, they can either harvest or sow seeds. In the sixth month, they can only sow seeds, no more harvesting. And then we have six months of growth when nothing happens. So if we want to grow some food, we have to make sure that the farm is up and running before we get to the end of the sowing period. Otherwise, we will not be sowing anything and we'll have to wait a full year before we can actually grow our own food or our own weed to pay workers. So we're going to unpause now. We'll see that these people will start to move soon. We get the first markets. We get housing up. We can see people are now starting to walk towards a house. It has 16 inhabitants. There's another 16. There's another four. So everybody now has a house. We can see everybody leaves. As soon as they visited their house, they will redistribute among all the jobs. So here we can see a little farm, two private fields. We have a private workshop, another private workshop. And that's where they'll go and do their jobs. And some will go here to build the builder's office. But as you can also see by the time, that it's already month two now. So that goes really fast. So hopefully we are in time. If not, it's not a big issue. But we have to make sure that we have as few government workers as possible to save up on some grain. It's a species that is quick to colonize disturbed habitats. <laughs> Grain still grows wild in a lot of places. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Actually, if you just walk around uh, my country, like the Netherlands, uh, there's also places where you just have weed growing, not like in big fields, but they just come up uh, among the grass and stuff like that. That's really interesting. It's actually quite possible if you live near a strand or grain, a stand of grain to collect quite a lot of the stuff quickly, even with flint bladed sickle, according to what archaeologists have found. Yeah, that's true. A test at the end. <laughs> yeah, well, the main reason, of course, for the um, why um, the whole farming revolution or the agrarian revolution happened in uh, this area is it's called the Green Half Moon. It was a very fertile land, perfect climate, 
perfect wetness. So basically they did not have to do anything. It was already growing there in good numbers. Then all of a sudden they found out that you could use it to bake bread. So people were already going out collecting grain and stuff and making a bread out of it. Not bread as we know it right now, but they were making these flat uh, sort of uh, pizza bottoms. Th those were their breads. And then after years, they found out that if you sow it in at the right time and give it some water and stuff, that it will grow really well. And of course, all of these inventions or whatever you want to call it are mostly done by accident. All right, we have farmers now. It is still month four, so we can still get some grain in the ground. Could actually be worth it to up the number of workers already so that we get more workers that can start sowing grain. And I'm really hoping we can see that we're going to grow some barley on this field. And if we're lucky enough, they should just go out and start to sow in the field. Come on, go out. Don't stay in here. Now, of course, there's a lot to this game. As we go along, uh, I will go and uh, explain more and more things that are in the game. Of course, as far as I know it, because I don't know everything as well. But... Um, it is really interesting. Now, I wonder why they are not sowing this field. That's a bit weird. Maybe they are waiting for all the workers to get in. There's 15 in there now. But now we're almost out of time. As you can see, even on the slowest speed, the calendar goes pretty fast. Oh, pr probably. They probably first made porridge and things like that. Ah, there they go. They're going to sow in the land now. We can see that they're actually doing that. And, uh, yeah... And, and then they made bread and stuff. They, they At least they found a use for all the grain. And then quite some time after that, they were starting the first farms and trying to grow it themselves. <laughs> no Aldi then. <laughs> well, basically, in a lot of areas, especially when humans first arrived there, the whole area was basically... A Aldi because there were fruit trees there was grain growing on the land there were animals there um, it was basically just a big grocery store it was called nature and there was plenty of everything so have you played this game Asurna? Ooh, there's a little girl here coming to say good night so I'll be back in a second And we're back. Sorry. Family comes first. And little one's going to bed. So yeah, I had to say goodnight. So we can actually see something growing on the farm here. I also see new people in chat. So good evening, Thomas and Cooper. Nice to see you both again. Lovely. How are you two today? I hope all is well. Oh, you've seen other people play it. It's kind of fun, but a bit limited at the time. Well, I, I think there is more to this game than meets the eye, but you have to get to that point. So right now we are not doing that much. We have a very small village. We have 63 people in there. We can see that 22 children, 14 private workers, 27 state workers. That's quite a bit. We have to pay quite some grain to actually uh, supply for them, but that's okay. We have no jobless people. We have more people arriving. That's great. So they should come from different areas and we could probably see them walking in at some point, walking towards our little town. They can even come via water. So that's cool. I don't see them at this point, but they might just be coming in from some area. Sometimes you can see them actually walking into your village. 
Yeah, those were great dogs of Cooper. That's true. I originally had to uninstall Attila Total War because it was taking up 100 gigabytes. Ooh, wow, that's big. How did that get so big? All right, well, I think for now we are off to an okay start because quite soon we're going to get to the harvest and we have a big field that should grant us a lot of food. But the thing is, we need to keep expanding. So what I'm going to do in this case, we're going to build another farm here and another big field. And I'll tell you why soon. The thing is, these 20 workers can perfectly do this field, but they have to do things in a few steps. First of all, they will go over the whole field and harvest it. Then they will go over the whole field and bring all the grain that they harvested back to the farming house. Then they will go out again and start sowing. But if you have two fields, they will first do the complete harvest here. Then they will go to the other field to do the complete harvest. Then they will start bringing in everything from one field, then from another field, and then they will start sowing. And the problem then is that by the time they get to that, it's already no longer sowing time and you get nothing because they spend too much time. So right now I'm keeping the numbers almost even. So I have one farm per big field. Once I get up to like three or four farms, then I can add one extra field to it. But that's it. If you have one farm and like four or five fields, then you get absolutely nothing because they don't have time to do that. Ah, yeah, that should probably be mods. I think that's true. Okay, so here we are. We can see that it produced a good amount of uh, grain. We just now have to bring it in. And that's where the next stage come in. Because now all these farmers will bring it into the farming house. But you can see by these red bars... If this is filled up, that means that there will be a lot of damaged and spoiled goods. So a lot of the grain that you put in here will go to waste. If we put it in the storage, we can see that it's already a tiny bit better. And later on, we can unlock better storages and stuff to make it even better. So we'll have to make sure that we start transporting goods from this little farm into the storage that we have. Now we can have different means of doing that, but one of the easiest way is via donkeys. Now... You can already see the blue circle again. Also, the donkeys have an area in which they can work and an area in which it won't work. So right now there's no problem. But of course, once we get a big town, it might be a problem. So we'll put down the donkeys right there. The thing is, we have to get more donkeys now because we have four donkeys standing here. But we need a lot more. So what we'll do for that is we'll make a little... Uh, not right there, by the way. What should be a better place? I already made a little error i think no we can fix this we'll do it right here that's okay we'll make a little donkey farm here so that we can grow our own donkeys or raise our own donkeys i have to say and then um we can get more donkeys into the trader is there trade in this game there is a form of trade uh but we're going to get to that later um I also think you can actually manually trade, but I have not done that yet. I've not gotten to that point. But you can build a trader. It is... Where is it again? I believe here. The fish market. Um, but it's a private seller thing. So if you place it, private people that have collected fish can sell it there. And you can get a little bit of grain out of that. Um, but it's not that there's a big trading post where you can easily trade, at least not in the beginning of the game. That should be coming in later. Cooper is cool, but he has little of separation anxiety, meaning I can't even take a dump without him sitting in front of me. And Oh, wow. What happens if you go out of the house without him then? The harvest of the fields is much faster than in Dawn of Men. Yeah, that's true. Good evening, by the way, Obi dude. Sorry, it's hard for me to notice chat while I'm playing the game, of course, but I try to keep up. Nice to see you here. How are you? Do you have any experience with this game? All right, we can see right now that they're starting to sow in this field. We did not add the extra workers to this one. I always put these at maximum workers, so all the work gets done. But let me pause for a second. You can see right now that they are still bringing in the grain from this field and it is already month five. So there's no way that they're going to completely sow in this field in this little time. 
That's why we need these two farms and soon enough another farmhouse to have enough workers working the fields. Because otherwise they will just sow in the field and then the, you get the harvest in the end. But then you have a year without any incoming grain because they did not have the time to also sow it in. Luckily we have the extra field now that is completely sown in in time. But um, basically the hardest thing I have found out so far in this game is to make sure... You have enough uh, farm workers to do actually do all the work. Good evening, Donny Danger. Nice to see you. I hope all is well and that you had a nice day. I had a beagle when I was a kid. She was really strong, but she was super nice. Ooh, that's nice. Well, little one went out for a walk trying to find uh, a few uh, dogs to pet. So she had fun with that. All right, we can now get donkeys, hopefully. We need the workers for it, but once we have them, we can. We also need workers for the transporters. And then we can get donkeys in there too. So that would be interesting. But it appears we don't have enough people right now. And if we want to know more about our city, we can see right here how things are. We have religion. We have the demand of the people and we have the demand for zoning and stuff. Now we can see they have a demand for more food. Uh, which is interesting. Maybe we could get some fishing going. But there's also a big demand for religion right now. So we're going to get to that soon. Let me first of all zone some fishing areas here. It's a bit far off for the people to go there. But uh, it should be okay. See there's a fishing dock now. Here we can see new immigrants coming in in their little boat. That's cute. Look at that. There they come. First time seeing this game, but very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But especially if you advance a bit more, it gets more and more interesting by the moment. So I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this, actually. More than I thought beforehand. All right, we can see now that we have two donkeys in here. They will start to reproduce. And then once they have grown up, they will be transported into the uh, donkey transporter. And then the people can use donkeys to transport grain and stuff, which will speed things up a lot. Now here we can see what happened. We have this field completely sown in and you can see that the whole field is bearing its grain. This is not completely sown in, only 62% and you can actually see the open spots there. So that's how detailed this game is. I like it a lot. This is a great game. My dad's got asthma issues again and a cat allergy. Yeah, then it's probably not good to have another dog. I'm mild allergic to cats. Ooh. Always been one of my fears that I would turn out to be allergic for something like every day. And then, I don't know, just seems so, so, so hard. And so I'm just really happy that I'm not actually. All right. We have some extra housing space. We still have plenty of food. And in a few months, we get new food incoming. So that is all working out. We now have two donkeys walking around and we can see them already here carrying goods. So this is now transporting 40 grain. And if we check this, a regular person can only carry eight. So using the donkeys to transport goods is a very good way of transporting stuff. And now that we have more food to go for to the state workers, we can have more state workers and have them starting to transport more goods we can also see that we got some young donkeys here that need to grow up and then they can go into the uh, transporting system which i think is really nice and it's accurate for the time they use donkeys for these things so that's really cool we can also see that our houses have like 15 or 13 inhabitants oh this one has 33 that's really nice this is a level one building this is the needs of the building. It has no need for walls. Land value can be very low. And this is uh, or this is what it has right now, I have to say. If we want our houses to upgrade, we need to make a mud wall around our whole village. Then the houses will upgrade because they feel more safe. And if we just click through all of this a bit, you can see that there's actually a lot of buildings we still have to unlock via science and stuff. But there's a lot to this game that we can do. Now, the next step that we're going to do is going to build ourselves, where is it, a little clay pit or mud pit so that we get some mud out of the ground. 
This also needs to be placed in fertile land because that's where the mud is, of course. Uh, there's, it has no negative effects on its uh, surroundings. So we can just paint it, put it down anywhere and having it a bit centralized can be very good. So I'm going to build it right here. Now we have a mud pit, people collecting mud and we can now start to build buildings for which we need some mud. Uh, one other thing I would like to build is an extra storage right here so that they can store grain in there as well. That will shorten the uh, walking distance. And I want an extra farm, especially in the beginning. Make sure you have plenty of farms so you get plenty of grain and you can really take care of the people. That's a really good thing. I like socks, the cat, not the clothing. <laughs> Papa, you're allergic to the pet shop game. Oh, that's true. That's true. That, that, that gets my allergies going. I'll start sneezing and stuff, getting angry. <laughs> We call the orbiting cat at my grandma's house socks because she's great white feet. Oh yeah, it's, some cats can really have a distinct pattern where it looks like they have socks. That's really nice. Great region for the oil industry. Well, right now it is, but uh, back in the day, this was actually a very green area. Now it's mostly sand and stuff, but uh, that wasn't always the case. All right, so we still see a small influx of people. One of the reasons that's happening is because we have no religion. Luckily, we can build a mud temple. And I think it's a good thing if we build ourselves a little mud temple. I think we can build it up here. That would be cool. It requires 20 mud. Now, the good thing with the donkeys is they can transport everything. And you can even prioritize things. So right now, farming is prioritized first and then construction materials. So as soon as the donkeys are done on the farm, they will start to move mud here. And then the builders can start to build the mud temple. So that's nice. And you can just change it up so you can have different priorities for different buildings and orders for which they build stuff and things like that. So even though this sometimes looks a bit like a simple game, there's a lot of well thought mechanics in it. And it is a great deal of fun. Now we can see right now it is month four and they're sowing in this field, they're sowing in this field and they're sowing in this field. So this is going to be a very good year with lots of grain incoming. I'd say the worst thing to happen to the region was World War One and the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, I think it's it's always a bit hard to 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 judge which is actually the hardest period and which was a little less hard and things like that but yeah you could be right who knows who knows it's only so many factors involved oh we can soon start to build the mud wall and the mud gates around our town and then we'll have a nice little village now the thing with the walling is, if we click a house, you can see that if it needs to upgrade, it needs to have a mud wall. That does not mean that you have to build a mud wall close to it. We actually have to build an, a mud wall completely around our town, all that we have. Now basically not all that we have, if we had left some space here, we would have, could have built the wall in here. That would have been fine, uh, but I did not do that, so I made a little boo-boo there. Um, but you have to make an enclosed area. Then it counts as a wall and everything in it will then have a mud wall. So if we want to get building now with a wall and have the houses upgrade, we really have to build quite a big area with that. But we're going to start with it. I'm just going to build a piece of wall here. I think this could be interesting. Let's build a gate in it. You can just put the gate anywhere. So that's nice. Let's build a gate here. This should be a nice start. Maybe in order to help build this, we should increase the amount of builders so that they can do it a bit faster. How many donkeys do we have? We have seven out of the seven donkeys. I say we up that to 10, keep it at the max. And we can also add workers to it. And then we can have 20 donkeys for even more transportation. Big problem they have to avoid would be Dutch disease. You should be familiar with that, Patma, seeing this you're from the Netherlands. <laughs> Had they been able to hold out till oil was discovered, we probably have seen the Ottomans recover a bit. Yeah, who knows, who knows. But, um, oh well. 
the Ottomans would have to have leaders canny enough to get them a good deal. Yeah, well, interesting talks in chat, that's for sure. And nice to see you all here and that we uh, can have some fun here. I hope you all are having fun. I know I'm having fun building this little town here. Of course, if you have suggestions or questions, just let me know. I'll try to answer them. Of course, I don't know all the answers, but uh, I'll try uh, to answer them. My cat have white long John and white socks. Also white cat with black and orange spots. Nice. Yeah, I was going to try that too, but I've made a little mistake here. I don't think the walls can fit in here, but I can try. No, I don't think so. So yeah, that was a little mistake. What I could do, of course, is place another farm field right here. I have an idea. We're just going to fix it. We'll place a farm field there and a farm here. And then soon enough, I'll delete this farm and this field once they harvested it. That should fix everything. And then we can build the wall here. Ah, that's it. I did that in one of my trial games because it's it's way smarter to build all the farmland outside. So, um, Obi Dude, you're totally right. We're just going to fix it. But I also like to just build a big walled area so we still have some space for housing and stuff inside of our walls and we don't have to build a completely new wall. The good thing about upgrading houses though is that they can house a lot of people. So that's really nice. We still have good amounts of people incoming. That's good. Um, and we have most of the buildings that we need at this point. We just need to grow our population a bit more. Because something we have not talked about, but I'm going to show it to you already, is the technology tree. So we have to get a lot of research done at some point. Um, to get warehouses, to get to a small temple, to get to tanning, those kinds of things. Uh, but for that we need a elder's house where they will do the research. But we have to get that after we have unlocked 200 citizens. We are at 143 now, so it will take some time. But in the end we'll get it. Can you build defensive walls? Yes we can. We start off with these mud walls and the gate. Then we get to brick walls and we can even get to the high wall which needs even more bricks. So that's interesting. These men are now going to build these uh, walls, or at least start it. Some of the mud's already being brought in, so that's good. They have a hundred mud here. I think we just need a few more donkeys to carry all the goods around. But right now, we have 10 out of the 11 that we should have. Uh, once we have 20, but we also need a few more workers, then it will be fine. Then they can carry all the goods around. Oh wow, look at this. Three completely filled up fields. I like it. That should bring in plenty of uh, grain. Right, let's put in uh, 20 workers here. And then as soon as this field is done, we'll delete it. Once this farm is emptied out later on, we will um, make sure that uh, we delete that too. And then we can build the wall here. That's probably the best place. Oh wow, you really had the um, the cats and then the offspring and then... Oh wow, that's cool. Then they're, they're like really part of your family. Alright, the harvest started. Very good. Very good. Oh, except one of them lost the traffic. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. She was eight. Alright. 15 to 17. Oh, well, that's a good age for cats. We had one when I was uh, young. They got it a few months before I was born, I think. And uh, it, it turned out uh, like 18 and a half, something like that. But then um, her heart started failing and stuff and kidney started failing. So we had to... Uh, Put her down, but uh, it was a very old, very nice cat. Yeah, I can. I can. Well, if you're really allergic to to things like a cat, I think it can also build up. So in the beginning, you can be like slightly allergic, and then it can get worse and worse over the years, I believe. But yeah, when it gets really bad, then if, yeah, of course you have to let them go, I guess. Which is a shame, but. Uh, 
Three generations of random cats have made my grandma's house home. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And of course, thanks to everybody watching and everybody talking in chat. Feel free to do so if you want to. But if you don't want to talk in chat, that's totally fine. Just lurk around. Thanks for showing up anyway. I really appreciate it. I hope you all do too. And uh, feel free to give any suggestions or whatever. I'm just going to do a little bit of zoning. In order to be ready for... Um, the walls, so that I know how big my city I want my city to be. That's the thing. Now, if we have these extra zones, we might also need to get a bit of extra market stalls somewhere. Could be interesting. Now, basically, we really have to research everything soon. So we have to research even things like a well and stuff so that we can uh, get down to building wells for the people, make uh, canals to get water to the people. So that's all really nice. And thank you all so much for the likes. That is so much appreciated. And that helps me in the YouTube algorithm. So I'm really happy with that. 28th of December. Oh, that's about Cooper. I've written it down on the uh, birthday calendar. So we're going to celebrate his birthday when he either turns 10. That's cool. Kind of started when we found a mama and her kittens. One of the kittens got an eye infection and I spotted it and we took them to the vet and started feeding them. Oh, wow. That's really nice. More people should help out animals if they see animals in, in hurt or whatever. Uh, and, and then help them out and take care of them because there's so many abandoned animals nowadays. All right. We can see the walls taking shape a bit. I really like how they look. And later on, we can just upgrade them to the their stone counterparts. So that's nice too. We can see the state fields brought in some food. All the demands are pretty in the green. So that's nice. We could use some more food. But I think we also need quite a bit more workers before we actually get to that point. The problem is there's a lot of citizens that want to join. But apparently they're not arriving so much. Here comes somebody. Ah, here we see people arriving now. That's also happening because we have such a big map. So they enter the map and then we still have to wait a long time before they actually reach our town it's also interesting that they come can come from all directions so it could well be that there's somebody here that's coming our way to join us so yeah this is probably immigrants too yeah going to the city they're taking a slight detour i think so they're coming in from
So far I have not experienced a raid or anything. I don't think we can actually get attacked. So uh, just making sure that you have all of that is nice. Now we have one builder's house with 10 builders in it. What we could do is get an extra one. Build it a little bit more to this side because we're going to build walls here too. We can later on remove it if we want to, but once it's done, we have a few extra builders that can actually start building this. Because the mud's already there for a while, we just need more builders now. And that can actually work very well, so that's nice. Can you have fisheries for Hiradev to manage? Yeah, we have a fishery here, fishing dock. There's no workers in it right now, but uh, we have that. Um, you can't build them manually, we have to assign zones and then villagers will come there and start working there. And uh, yeah, they can. So yeah, Hiradev can have a job there. I like it that you only need mud and no forestry. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then soon enough we can use the mud to make bricks. And we can uh, make pottery and things like that. Once we research it, of course. So that will take a bit of time. Because of the huge map. And the uh, slow rate at which the immigrants arrive us. And of course we play speed 1. Which is also a big factor. Um, because of that... It takes a bit before this reaches 200, but soon enough it should, and that will be very helpful. Right here we have these big sections of wall. Ah, oh, very nice. And, but yeah, there's a lot of different jobs. We can get jewelry, an oil press, we can get pottery, we can get a brewery. So even Roadhog would be happy if he joins us in chat, but he's watching the Formula 1 right now. I imagine the cultural differences between the US mostly keeps cats indoors has to do with cats not facing serious predation threats and drivers generally being better and less numerous. I guess so. I guess that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. America is a car driven nation because the whole infrastructure is made so that you use your car. Even just going out to dinner at the end of your street is usually done by car because walking there is dangerous with people driving around 50, 55 miles an hour. That's true. And of course, in a little country like the Netherlands, where a lot revolves around bikes and walking, it's different. We even have city centers where they just banned cars and made them f just for pedestrians and cyclists. I think that's, that's not going to happen in the US anytime soon. All right, we can see more houses pop up. That's nice. That means more people are coming in. We are at 190 now. Just a few more and we are at 200. We have the 20 workers in the transporters. Just 12 donkeys though. So let's get that up. Up to 15 now. So the more goods they can transport, the better. And I hope you all noticed so far... I've been playing this game at speed 1. We are already in year 5. We have accomplished quite a bit. Even though it's just 3 quarters of an hour into the stream. Um, so this game runs quite nicely at a uh, quite slow pace. Just speed 1. You can still have time to manage everything and do everything. There's no real need to play at speed 2 or higher. Which is something that I really enjoy. All right, we're going to build another thing, which is another uh, livestock farm. But in this time, I think for cattle. Ah, oh, will it fit in here? It won't be too big, but that's okay. We can always build more later on. Um, how big do I want it to be? Oh, this is nice. So we're going to build a cattle farm here to get going with that. Because we have to do a lot of breeding with the animals. We have to buy our first cattle, which is quite expensive. And um, once we have that, they have to start reproducing, which takes quite a bit of time. So having one of these early on is very nice. We get some meat from it. We can get some leather from it or, or hides. But um, it takes time before you get enough animals. So starting off a bit early can be really nice. We can see that they're doing a really good job building the walls. That's basically because now the um, donkeys don't have to walk that far. And the builders too. That's why they can build so fast right there. Here we have the extra builders too. So it's actually quite tempting to just set up a whole other section of the wall. Oh, I did not put this up far enough. All right, let's go like this. Uh, 
Let's put up another gate somewhere here. Let's see how big we're going to make. I think we're going to start with a, big, a pretty big town. So do we have some space to keep expanding to? I think that's nice. So we'll do it something like this. And then we'll go all the way up here. And then connect it, which is really easy to do. So that's that's also a nice feature that you can pretty easily connect different areas of your town. I'd like to build quite a few gates just for the fun of it. All right, there we have it. This should be our first town. It is in space for all the builders. I don't think that, yeah, the donkeys can get it everywhere too. So that's nice. We should be able to completely build this. Hey, Herodev, nice to see you. Rumi went to the lake and I woke up to him at my door with the biggest trout we've seen out of the lake. Wow, that's great. Congratulations. It's on ice now, but needs to be scaled and put in the freezer. All right, well, nice. Nice that you caught, or Rumi in this case, caught a nice big trout. That'll taste good. And nice to see you. Very true, Kevin. Very true. I stream the game. You all have so much fun and nice words in chat. And it's just really nice to see all the likes pop up and all the people watching. So thanks so much. All together we make this stream. Without all of you, I would not have so much fun and be, not be so inspired to do all of this. And of course, without me, there wouldn't be a game. But um, it's really a joint effort. So thanks so much. Even the Garden City concept was sort of inspired the post or to suburbia. Yeah, that's true. Well, and of course, since America has such a relatively short history in most parts of the country, like no big medieval towns and stuff, that's also a very big difference. And uh, like a lot of cities in, in Europe were built, uh, not even with horses and stuff in mind, just build it. Um, and most cities in America were built at least with the horse carriage in mind. And usually even other things because they're all relatively new. Yes, Herodev is running the fisheries. Here we have them. There's actually workers in them. So... Um, Hope you do a great job bringing in some fish. Fishing is very high, so that should be good. One of the other things we could get now is the fishing market. We have to place it precisely on the shoreline, as you can see here. So we'll have to find a nice spot for that. But then we also have a fishing market where traders can come in and buy some fish. I think that would be worth it. So let's get that. It requires a bit of mud, but um, that should be okay. Don't think the donkeys can get there though, so we might need an extra donkey shed, but we'll find out. The canning machine is doing overtime. Yeah, that's probably it. Well, with such a nice big fish, it's well earned. Very good. All right, we have 19 out of the 20 donkeys that works. We still have 2,500 weed, and there's more incoming soon. It's important though that you keep the farm number of farms up. So if you start growing your uh, village and getting more and more state workers, you have to make sure that you can pay them with grain. So keep building more farms once you expand your whole village. But right now we are going to go to the Council of Elders, which sounds really interesting. And it is. Because the Council of Elders is where we do our research. I'm going to build two. As you can see, we can connect these. We can make it bigger and bigger. You can even change the way it looks once it's done. So that's interesting too. I hope they will add more of that to different buildings. But right now they're going to build this. And that's where we'll get research points from. So that we can unlock new researches, which will be great. Here we see the little temple with a little statue in it. This is our mud temple. I think we can make the area a bit bigger that it works in so that more and more people get inspired by um, the authority from it. That's nice. Religion is now pretty okay. They need water access though. So we really need to get to the point that we can do some research and then um, research the well so that we can build a few wells and maybe even a canal through our town. 
Now this could actually be a great spot for a canal. So that we have a lot of water available in town. We have to get the canal from somewhere here though. So we might need to delete one of the fisheries. But it can be really interesting. Do you have to rotate crops? No, you don't have to rotate crops. There are different crops. We can have barley, flax and later on even sesame. And flax of course to in the end create some cloth. Uh, so now we have an empty livestock farm. We need 600 to just buy one piece of cattle. If we buy two, then um, they can start to reproduce. But it's a bit expensive. Luckily, we have the harvest incoming. So I am going to buy two. And then we'll see. Hopefully, we're doing good. Right now, we're almost out. You can even see the number turning red. Because they need to bring in a lot of the stuff. And since we are building more and more... Um, basically state-run buildings i'm going to expand the uh, farming business so let's build i have a better idea let's make another field here like this and then build a farm next to it so that we have an extra farm field going We have uh, plenty of mud in the mud pit. 100 out of 100. So that's good. So I'm thinking... We might just get another donkey... Place right here. So that they can have extra donkeys running around. Transporting all the goods. Because now the donkeys are all very busy on the farm. You can see them all running around here. So having them... Or having a few extra to speed things up might be might be no luxury, might be a very good thing. Poppy's doing well. She hates the cone and wants to get back to regular dog life. She goes for a checkup Tuesday. Okay, well that's nice. So I guess no more complications the last days. I mean that would already be a big step, so that would be great. I really hope the recovery starts kicking in now and that it goes really fast. And of course to everybody watching, thanks so much. If you enjoy this and want to see more or want to see more streams or more of my videos, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Then of course you have my channel in your list of channels and you might get a notification when I upload a video or when I'm live. So then you can see more. Of course if you don't want to, then just simply don't do that. But um, 
Is this the game? The base game or does this come in packs? No, this is the base game. Last time I checked, it was 16 or 17 euros in, in the Netherlands. I don't know what it's in other countries. Um, but yeah, this is... You just buy this. This is the game. Everything works and plays and does, so... Oh, that's nice, Hero Dev. I don't know if they will... Uh, bring out um, DLCs later or things like that. I have i don't know the developer that well and if it works like that. I know they've been working on this game for quite some time and it is actually working out quite well. This is version 1.0.1. .1. So it's recently completely came out. I already had it in early access but then it still needed quite some work. But from there on it, it came quite far. We can see now that we have six cattle. We only bought two so it's already reproducing. But that's nice. But yeah, they came a long way and just the relaxing music in your ears, it's amazing. I love that already. So yeah, there's a lot to this game that I love and enjoy and uh, I hope they will keep developing it for a bit. But it's already a good game and before you reach the end, like we are already playing it for almost an hour now. We have not even got to research yet, which we do desperately need though, because right now we have 173 state workers and we can have only 180. So we're going to need more. But we can unlock those via different techs. Get more state workers possible. So um, that is what we're going to aim for. As we see these uh, little farms from the people working. There's still more places that they can do that. So um, another nice feature is they form roads automatically. But you can also build your own roads. So for instance if you want this to look like one big village city road. You can just paint it. And now all of a sudden this housing area looks like they can walk on it all the time. I think that's amazing. So this this gives a little bit more of a city feel to this area, if you get my point. So if we do it like this, especially around the clay pit and stuff. Now this really looks like it is the city area. And that is something that I really enjoy. And now they can just walk on everything. So uh, right now this is just a big square or something. I'll just have to make it look nice. Something like this. So now this is really the sitting as city area. And this is where all the nature and stuff is. We can build gardens and stuff later as well. Which is also really nice. Yeah, the music gives a great feel to it. And it, uh, it kind of like feels like it's really accurate for the time. I have no idea if it actually is. But it just feels that way. It's really nice. How about putting the canal place for now? There's some little... In place now. Um, well, the problem is we need to research the canal, which is right here. Irrigation canals. Um, and we can put a shadoof on it, which is basically like a bucket on a... Um, what, what's it What's it called? On a lever so that they can easily scoop water out of the uh, thing. That's also used in ancient Egypt. Um, but we have to research it first. And for that, we need this building to be finished. And they need to bring mud in there. But I think the mud will go to the walls first. But I'm not 100% sure. No, it should not make a difference. We'll just have to be a little bit patient. There is plenty of mud in here. Still 85 and they're filling it up. You can see how fast that goes. It's already up to 88 now. So that's fast. But they tend to spread out the amount that they bring to different building sites. So uh, we have to be a little bit patient. But as soon as we can start to do research, we can start to build the... Um, canal and hopefully after that some wells and things like that it's a great suggestion that we should do that because we really should but uh, we have to be a little bit more patient there's also the problem with health at this point because we need to do research to get to health otherwise we might end up in a big pandemic and i can tell you already from experience that's not nice but uh oh well for now it's okay but um we might just need to uh, start working towards the doctor. There should be a doctor in here as well. It's quite far out though. Oh here, the doctor. Yeah, units of weight. So we can get that uh, pretty easily. But um, we really need to build that. Otherwise, big parts of your entire civilization might just die out because of pandemics and stuff like that. 
Yeah, no problem, Thomas. It was a good question, so no problem. But uh, yeah, we have to wait for this building to be done. Then we need to put people in it, which is already an issue because we already have a lot of state workers. Should have built this a little earlier, but uh, oh, we'll fix that. No problem. And then we'll get to the point that we can actually just uh, do the research. Quite tempted to uh, speed things up, but I think it's running nicely now. So we're not going to speed up. We're just going to let it run. Yeah, the curse of the tech tree. But I think actually this tech tree is really nice. It adds nice things like brewing, fabric. In the end we get to metallurgy and then copper and trade routes. So then we can import copper and stuff. It's really interesting. Needs a bit of work every now and then. Oh, and one of the things I've already found is that at some places the walls don't seem to work as walls. Because they can simply walk through. So that's probably still a little bug in the game. But um, at some places they can just pass through those walls. But I have to say, if you take a look at a village like this, I think it really looks like an ancient city from back in the day. It's interesting. I really love how this is built. All right, here we go. 30 clay in now. So just 10 more and it should be done. There's two active builders, so people should be building it. You can actually see all the stuff laying around in the different build phases. I like that too. There's these buckets of mud that they're using to build it. I think the amount of detailing in this game is actually pretty good. Building irrigation for the fields. Ah, that could be nice. Well, we could, could build a canal for the fields just to add flavor to it. We don't have to, but we can do it. Um... There's no real need to it. But of course, in this time period, there was no need for irrigation. Uh, in these parts because it was all good enough so there was no real need but yeah it, it would be nice we could probably do a canal somewhere here and then just have the uh, nice look of it that would be cool I think using this whole area for a canal we can also build bridges over the canal once it's ready uh, so we can build a few bridges here then over the canal I think there will be Give an awesome look to this town. I hope it fits in here. Otherwise, we might have to move some things. But um, I really hope it fits. We're going to try it anyway. Let's see. There comes some clay. Where are they bringing it? To the walls. Okay. So we have to be patient. Ah, where does this go? To this piece. Yeah, 30 clay here. 30 clay here. So one more drop of clay. And they can finish the building. Oh, that'll be interesting. Do we still have enough clay in here? Yeah, so we don't need to up the workers there. Last time I had a pandemic in my test game. It was really bad. It killed like a third or a quarter of the population at one go. So I'm also getting quite anxious that we're going to hit something like that before we have the doctor. Because if we have the doctor, we have means to take care of it. But without it, you don't. And you just have to wait it out. And uh, hope that you still have a population afterwards. You can see people actually visiting the market stalls, which is also really nice. So people actually go there, visit it, and then at some point go back. We can see this guy's a farmer. He's carrying his farm tool. He's just visiting the market right now. So all the people in the game are actually people in the game. So there's 20 people living in here and there's 20 people moving around the map. That you can actually see. So it's not like it's randomized. People are just doing something. But it's not actually what happens. Every person you see is one of those 418 that we have in our town. So that's pretty cool. Now of course these are filled with farm people. They all live in these farms. That's fine. Do you need to make a cemetery? Ooh, no. Not so far. Could be in the game though. A royal palace. I don't think the cemetery is in the game. You can build different statues and stuff like that. A plaza. But I don't think we can build a cemetery. I have not found that yet. Big temple. A ziggurat. No. Maybe that's something they'll add or like burial grounds or whatever. I don't know if they actually used a cemetery in these days or that you were just buried in your ziggurat or whatever. I don't know how that worked. Actually been uh, thinking about reading up on the uh, 
Sumerians period for a long time now. I have not gotten to it yet. But now also playing this game would be really nice to start reading up a bit on this period of time and learning some stuff about it. Hey Roadhog, nice to see you. Hope all is well. Sounds like you got to watch a really nice race with the Formula 1. Tell us all about it. As we are playing this nice city builder. Alright, here they go. All the resources are in. One of the two active builders is en route. That should start building it, so that's cool. Oh, by the way, Donnie, I already said it in the... Um, on the video, but really nice start with your new town in City Skylines 2. That was really fun. I watched the whole thing and it looked really good. So uh, people, if you want to watch a nice video from uh, City Skylines 2, go over to Donny's channel. He has a great video up there. It's really nice. Right, we should have two builders here soon now. And then we can start going with some research. That would be nice. Great battle between Perez and Alonso. Okay, nice. For which place? NASCAR final race today. Ah. All very interesting. That's cool. All right. We really need these. Uh... Spain. Ooh, nice. Where in Spain are you? I guess if you're along the south coast or something, should be nice weather and stuff. Do the fields always stay healthy or is there crop destruction as well? Um, the fields do stay healthy, so that's usually not a problem as far as I know, because I have only had a few hours in the game. I have not come across any crop diseases or something like that, but um, you can see here that all of these red bars are filled with me which means that a lot of food that is actually in this building is at risk of damaging or spoiling if we can bring it to a warehouse you can see that there's one red bar not filled so there's a little less spoilage but there is still a good amount of spoilage and i believe if we click this and we expand this we can see if we take on grain 
that um, we consume around 900 a year and at 350 is spoiled which is actually quite a bit and as long as we keep producing in amounts that we do we will see the spoilage go up too because after a while grain will go uh, bad so things will spoil that's that's in the game but it's not like the um the fields will go bad or something like that luckily because otherwise we'll have a problem in the end just on holiday and did a trip around southern spain nice that's great catching some senoritas <laughs> not much time as trip full on oh cool did you go to the malaga area That's the only area in space I've ever been to, so that's why I know about that. <laughs> Alright, research almost done. The second part of this structure is now also true. You can see that these two look a little bit different. The interesting thing with these two buildings is you can change the look. So you can change the front size and you can change the roof. Whether you want a little, I don't know, sun sunlight or something in there. So once you start making this bigger you can give them two different looks which is nice i mean i hope they add some stuff to it but some buildings have that in the, in this game that you can give them a slightly different look all right the research is ready let's up the number of people in here 20 and 20 yes all right so we'll get more researchers let's get to irrigation that should now be very fast because we have more workers in there so irrigation should be researched really fast Senoritas are Catholics. Then he gets to take the whole family on a date if he tries to catch a senorita. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But after a nice date, he can just go to confession and all his sins will be forgiven. So that's also very nice about them all being Catholic. <laughs> Believe me, I tried. Oh, I believe you. Candle sales go up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, let's add a few people to the farm so that we have the maximum amount of people. I really want them all to work there. As we get to canals, very good. One little thing about this game is that it's really hard to see when the research is spotted because this is so small. Maybe I should make the interface a little bit bigger. I would like some sort of a notification. Let's get the units of weight and then the brick building as I'm going to try and build a nice canal. Now, how do we do that? Pretty easy. I just don't think it will fit in here, but um, we'll see. You have to make a starting point at a river. I guess down here is the most easy way. So let's just tell them to uh, go to zoning. Can we dezone? Yes, let's dezone this so that we can start the canal here. There we go. You can see right now that we, you can go under the uh, city or at least you should be able to. Which is nice. So let's go like this. Can we go through here? No. Okay. Um, there are areas where you can go under the city. So we'll just have to find such an area. Maybe if we do it a bit... No, I have a better idea. Let's get rid of this zone too, so that we can just go in here. That's probably easier than doing all the other fuzzy stuff. So yeah, we go like this. Then we go in like this. Can we now go in here? Kind of hope so. Well, seems like if we do it slow enough, we can get through. I just really hope it works and we don't uh, run into any hinky stuff, but uh, we'll see. I hope this is going to work out. Alright, so here we have a canal. Now we can build bridges over it so that they can actually pass it, which is nice. Let's we'll just build a few bridges. There we are. And we can build these little things around it where people can actually get the water out. 
All right, here we go. We'll just have to wait now before because everything needs to be built. But that should be fun. And this gives me time to read up on chat. Yes, Malaka, Cadiz, Granada. Oh, nice, 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 nice. I went to my honeymoon to the south of Spain, so that was nice. But well traveled. Great trip. And now you can be here. That's amazing too. Wow. Good evening, Manuela. Nice to see you. Just woke up from a nap. Well, that's nice. Having a nice nap and then waking up watching a stream. That's great. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> and I hope all is well. I need a nap too, Don. <laughs> well then, just go to sleep. Now you can actually see them dig the uh, canal here, which is nice. I like that. I like how they do that as we're going to pick the brick building research. And then soon enough we should see water in it. And then hopefully completely filling it up, of course. Oop, there's our first problem. We have a little disease now, which is a pandemic. Now we can't place bonfires. Bonfires can help you... Um, get rid of the pandemic but the problem is we don't have doctors yet so um can we already build a doctor yeah we can start building the doctor that's good we need the doctor um we need two actually or oh this is nice in the center that's interesting let's build one in the center of the town that should work out it's a bit late now though so we're going to lose a lot of population to this pandemic but uh, at least we are now doing some research which is nice i like that all right we're getting the brick research done let's start working on something else now what do we need let's get to the small temple for the religious needs that's also something that we're gonna need this is why I'm here and you need need your soothing voice. <laughs> well, then you should already be fast asleep, I guess. But uh, you never know. <laughs> Donny works too hard. Yes, he does. Working at the university all weekend and doing streams and videos and things. He works really hard. All right, look at this. Some parts of the canal are ready. We can already see the water in it and some nice plants and overgrowth. So that's nice. The bridge here. Now they just need to work on this, but I'm not 100% sure that they are doing that at this point. Oh, they made a little ditch here. Let's just hope they can keep going and they will build the full length of the canal. I really hope so. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Mask up Sumerians, yeah. Guess we should get some uh, masks for them so that the pandemic will go over. We should put the whole city in lockdown. Uh, that ain't gonna happen. Oh well, we can see it spreading around the houses, so um, we're in big trouble. We have almost 500 people now. We will see that go down. But, uh, oh well, it's fun, and at least it's, um, it's not an easy walk in the park, this game. So far, it is not that hard. You just have to get into it a bit. It's a really nice game. But it's also nice that there are some challenges. We can already see the number of people dropping now, by the way from almost 500 now down to 480 here we can see the drop and it will get worse and worse and worse until the pandemic is over wish the houses were a little more colorful they look like cardboard that's true but these are just level one houses and um if we provide the mud wall to them the houses will start upgrading and they will start looking better uh, we have to remember that this is the sumerian age so this is like Around 10,000 years ago, they just had these little mud houses. Everything is mud, basically, right now. Even the temple is made from mud. So, um, at some point, we should see better housing. We can also get to brickwork soon, so we can start to make our own bricks. But until then, we can actually already do that. So, let's get the brickworks up. Um, but until you do that, you'll get those upgrades. It's just this. But that's, of course part of the uh, time period all right let's see the pandemic is over after the angry god has finally abandoned our city after 157 days 25 blocks of houses 98 people die which is a quarter of the whole population we had so yeah this was bad no they died we are if we take a look at the population graph you can see we had 494 and we're now down to 395 so yeah people died not good, but okay, it's okay. Good evening, Ed. Nice to see you. How are you? 
get them vaccinated. <laughs> well, that would be a nice option, but we can't do that. Yeah, they had no vaccines in this age. Quite powerful vaccines, but... Um... All right, we have the Shadouf. Look at this. This is really historically accurate how the actual Shadouf looks. It's really great, but uh, there's still no water in the canal. They still have some digging to do. Oh, they're digging here now. That's good. I wonder how my wall is doing. This is all done. There are some areas here that needs to be built. And these needs... Oh, this already have some mud in it too. So I guess once the canal is ready and some of the uh, doctors maybe... They can finish off the wall. That would be nice. Interesting. Alright, here we see a boat. This is one of the trader boats that visited the market. The private market. So the private people can sell the private stock. Oh, there goes the water now that the canal was finished a bit further. That's great. We can also see that the land is turning green now. So by building a canal... You can fertilize this land. So far, if we check, you can see that if you want to build farmland on this light green, you can't. On the dark green, you can. Before this, we could not build a farm here. Now it should be possible because the land got fertile again. So this canal really works. And if we click one of the houses, we can see that their water access is now very high. You can build wells around town. Um, but... Uh, you get like medium access to water with a well. If you build canals, that will do a really great job in adding a water supply to your town. Now you can already see the mechanic needs quite a bit of a little bit of work. Because at these areas there's not really actual water here. They also need to do some digging here it seems. But um, no, they need to do a little bit of construction. That's why this is not ready yet. But I think it looks amazing. Having these little canals with some overgrowing plants and stuff. And it really makes uh, the whole village look even better, I think. It is not okay for those who died. <laughs> That's true, but since I work in a funeral business... I kind of need people to die to work. Otherwise, hmm, I don't have a job. But um, yeah, it's always nicer if people don't die, of course. I totally agree with that. <laughs> and just to clarify I am not like the one who owns the business or whatever so I'm not the one getting rich from it I just make a little bit of money helping out people I just do it because I want to do something nice and be helpful to people alright let's see because there is demand for stuff Market stalls, food, and workshops. So we need to address that. I think we can make a few more workshops around town. That might already serve a purpose. Now, as you can see, we can slowly rotate buildings with the Z and X keys. You can also add these lines to it. So you can see if you're actually adjusting buildings to the right way. You can also set it to a 90 degree rotation angle. So... Um, if we click this one off and go to the zoning, it's probably not so good to see it with the zoning because they won't really turn. But if we take this temple, for instance, now we can do at 90 degree angle turns. And we can also do a copy rotation. So there's different ways you can uh, move everything. So that's also very nice that they added something like that into this, I think. All right, let's build some extra zoning for that. And ah, they might need some extra food at zoning. Although I don't know where to put it. Well, maybe here. No, because this is where the... Uh... Yeah, they're not going to put it in there, I think. Interesting that they need that, but don't really use it. Because there's still more zoning here for farming they're just not building them so they don't need farms that bad maybe they want some extra fisheries or something we'll have to find out is your funeral home hunted well i don't have a funeral home so that's easy that's also not really how it works in in the netherlands but um i'm i do a few different jobs in the funeral work area um 
I'm hired as a casket barrier. So when somebody dies and they want to have a nice funeral and they want to have a church service and stuff like this in Holland, in some areas, it's a custom that you hire six or eight men that will wear black suits or gray suits and hats and stuff. And they will carry the casket for you. And I'm one of those people that does that. Um, I'm also hired to do live streams at funerals with a camera and uh, make sure that the people at home can watch it. And the city also hires me uh, to work at the city uh, graveyard. So when um, somebody died and they want to hold a service there and then bury someone, I'll be there to check all the paperwork, make sure that we're burying the right person, that the person is going into the right grave. Um, if there is a service and they have like a PowerPoint presentation they want to show with photos or, or want to have some music in, I'm the one that actually puts on the music that shows the, the PowerPoint and stuff. And I guide them through the whole process on the graveyard. So that's all what I do. But I, d I don't own a funeral home or something like that. And I also don't want to be called in the middle of the night because somebody died and I had to go there. Because I cherish my sleep very much. So I don't want to own a funeral home or something like that. I just do the daytime stuff. <laughs> You had any more video jobs, Potmos? Um, no, last few months it was like one or two a month. Uh, at least for the funeral jobs. I have not taken up any um, other video jobs. I've had a few requests, but um, well, of course time is limited. My time too. And I was not really inclined to do any other job so uh, I turned a few down I wanted to spend time on the channel and of course in the family and little one etc so uh, that was basically what I was doing all right I think we have a little issue because these sections of walls are not getting built and I think that's because they're slightly outside of the builders area so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a builder here we're going to need to build more stuff here anyway and with this builder they can probably build this so let's try that hopefully it works okay the fish is in the freezer gonna have a big canning day when the time comes we also want to smoke some nice if any place is going to be haunted i would expect the place to be like that yeah i think so too i think so too so the most likely places to be haunted that's your choir if it got any hits i don't know um I handed over the choir video to the uh, choir and they were going to put it up on YouTube and um, they're basically mostly going to use it to spread around in their friend circle and stuff and then hope that it spreads out a bit from there because um, it's an old man's choir and um, just sending out the video will most likely not attract a lot of people that will then come to the practicing and, and show up and stuff. So it's more like they do try to get mouth-to-mouth -mouth advertising. So they find another friend in their age group, like 60 plus, and then they can show the video to that person while talking about the choir and making them enthusiastic for it. And when they show it, um, people can get a little bit of an impression but it's not like they're just going to put it out there and hope that everybody will um, join the choir because that's usually not how it works it's actually quite hard nowadays to get people to attend such a choir so uh, I don't know I can look it up I guess at some point I'm not going to do that right now but I will look it up a bit later if it's already up and if it got any views but um, the whole choir really enjoyed it and uh, we're happy with it so that's at least a good thing and I just hope for the choir that it, it really helps them to get more people in. But um, you never know with these things. All right. So we're building a doctor which provides health and increases my authority. We also need to build a guard post soon to get the uh, security up. Now, right now we don't need it. We just need a mud wall for the next upgrade. But after that, we are also going to need... Uh, a guard tower. Now we see that these builders are already immediately active building this section of the wall. So soon enough the wall should be done. We can also see the population is recovering slowly. And uh, soon enough a lot of people should join us. That's great. So I like that. We had some 
Things getting moved around during his service. That was creepy. Ooh, that's really creepy. Oh boy, well I'm not one for horror movies and stuff like that. I'm also not really one for these kind of things. I want to sleep at night. <laughs> Alright, our farms are still producing enough food. Which is great, but it's it can never hurt to check every now and then if we are still... Yeah, we are still having increased amounts. So no need to start building an extra farm, but might not take too long before we actually have to do that. So we'll see. As young, I had with friends a creepy moment when we used the Black Bible. Not really Devil's Bible, but more or less the opposite to the Christian. Stuff happened we could not explain. Ooh. Well, I have to go now. Enjoy your fits and keep and good day and good night. Thanks, Obi Dude. Thanks for showing up. It was really nice. Thanks for the nice questions. Hope to see you another time. I'll see you and uh, take care. Thanks for all your nice words. And uh, I'll keep making fits for everybody to enjoy. I really enjoy making those fits. So that is something. All right, here we are. I think the mud wall is almost ready. Just the last section. And then we should see buildings starting to upgrade. So I hope they will then satisfy Manuela. That they will look a little bit nicer. That would be great of course. I don't think they're actually going to finish uh, some of these canal sections. Because uh, huh. I don't think they can anymore. Because there's water in there. But we'll see. Ooh, the Doctors is almost ready. That's great. Then we're going to build a guard post too. Although I want to separate the guard post. Not just in the middle, but people in a corner and then one in another corner, I guess. I think they all look nice too. Can we build a guard post here? Yes, we can. Does it have a circle to it? Not apparently, but I think it will in the end. So let's just build one right here. And, uh, I don't know, maybe one up here somewhere. I don't know if that's a bit too far away for these houses. I think it is. Uh, maybe just... Well, we have the builder and the transporter here, which I think in the end we're going to remove. But we'll just build it here right now, or here. Oh, we'll build it here in the center of town. That should be a good spot. I think it's also time to build a few beautifications. So we can build a few gardens, for instance. Um, that will make the land value go up a bit. We can see that we have no beautifications. And I think at some point we're going to need those too. So let's invest in these uh, gardens a bit. It also looks nice. So that's a, an added bonus to it. And uh, I think they only have to be built. So there's no real resources required. They just need to build these gardens. And then people can go out to enjoy them. Which I think is nice. Alright, there they go. There's still demand for some zoning, but they're not really using the zones that I gave them. I wonder why that is. I mean, we can just build this here. Will they then build it? No, they won't. What happens if we delete the road here? Will they then start to use it? Because then that could be the problem. No, I don't think so. Okay, well, we'll have to figure out at some point what it is. We will. Maybe add some fisheries now. That could also be a thing that they just want a lot of fisheries. Still have plenty of food now, though. Lol, maybe they will. Yeah, who knows? I think the wall's ready now. Here we see the newer houses. So these are now more like... Um, yeah, a bit of sturdier mud or some concrete-like buildings. We can now see they're level 2. And they just need security to go up another level. Uh, we can also see that more and more houses start to upgrade right now. This is also level... Oh, these are the workshops. Level 2 out of 3. So that's nice. Not all houses upgrade straight away. It might take a bit of time. But uh, now these are the newer houses. I think it already gives a different look to town. If we take a look at these houses. So I hope they uh, they are nice.
And remember though, even though we are just playing at the speed one pace, we still get to do a lot in this game and it is a lot of fun. So this is one of the few games that I actually really enjoy just playing in speed one since you can do so much on speed one, which is uh, quite irregular for a game like this. So this is really cool. Looks better. Oh, well, that warms my heart. That's good to know. I like it that way. You say it looks better than it does. All right, let's take a look at the uh, seller here. We're not really selling anything. So what we need to do probably is build a little warehouse here so that they can store some of the goods here and that might help to start selling them. Now we're totally forgetting about research. That's one of the things I hate. I would like to get a message once research is done so that we can keep continuing this. I think it's time for a brewery. Roadhog will love that, so let's do that. We can now build a small temple using bricks. Judging by its size, it's not actually that small, but I think it will be a nice addition. a live stream and now you too that's nice all right we can see these gardens look at this i think it's nice to have such a garden there and it adds beautification value water is very good we just need the security from the uh guard house we're building two guard houses now that needs a lot of bricks so we we need to get a few bricks going but that should be okay they're transporting all the wheat from the fields towards the storages that's nice that's where they should remain good for a tiny bit longer confirm all right Ah, Australia. I actually get that quite a bit from people that uh, they're not able to watch my streams from Australia. Either, of course, due to the time, but also some of them because of the poor connection. So they can't just watch it live because it won't just... It will just stutter all the time and things like that, which is interesting. But, um, oh, glad you can join us. You're up early, by the way. You have to go somewhere for work or um, just up early? I hope all is well. All right, we need 25 more bricks and we can build the guard post. That should be fun. 
We'll get a new harvest in soon enough. That is also a great thing. We get plenty of meat and hides. I think they should go into the storages, by the way. Do they? No. Oh, cured meat and leather go in there, but not what we have. So it's just staying in here, I guess, or it will spoil. Interesting. So um, we might need to get to things like uh, tanning and meat curing in order to make sure that we get uh, a good use for the meat. Right now we have beer brewing unlocked and then we can build the brewery it needs grain and pottery in order to produce beer well roadhog is in chat now so we'll have to build a brewery to keep him happy so let's build it next to the potter and then hopefully we can start brewing our own beer What's the time difference? I know where my mom is in Germany. They are six hours ahead. Oh yeah, well we're close to Germany. We have the same time. Ten hours, nine hours. Oh wow. Got a six month old daughter to feed. Ah yeah, that's a good reason to get up early. And uh, if you don't get up early, they'll wake you. <laughs> that's nice, but congrats on the nice daughter. I have a six year old daughter. Also really nice. Seems like a great community. It is, it is. I have the most nice chat, I have to say that. Everybody in chat's always so nice, very respectful so far. We can talk about basically anything, and we have already talked about quite a few different topics over the different streams. Uh, we can have different opinions and stuff, and everybody can still respect each other and have a nice talk about something else then if we disagree about something we can also talk about the disagreements by the way so uh yeah kudos for the chat it's amazing i've never thought i would experience such a thing but uh, yeah this is the nicest chat i've ever seen so thank you all so much we are great yeah donny you are remember that So nice meeting different people from all around the world. Ah, we're building the pottery already a little bit. Now that's one of the things in this game. They will spread all the bricks around. So now the bricks go to the potter. Then some bricks will go to the brewer. Then they will go to the small temple. So basically what we are doing wrong is that I'm building too many brick buildings at the same time. So we'll, they will just bring the bricks to all the different buildings all the time. And not just focus on one, finish it and then go to the next. Which is uh, my mistake of course. But uh, well... Plenty of time, so uh, we'll wait until it's done. We still have plenty of grain. Still good amounts, so I'm happy with this. Yeah, let's keep this up. This is fine. They are now really sowing in some of the fields already, bringing in the last bits of harvest. That goes well, that goes well. We have 48 donkeys, that's a bit too many.
In such a small country as the Netherlands, we, we really have no clue about distances and different time zones in a country and stuff like that. It's also it's always interesting to hear different things about that. Like, I guess if you live in Sydney or in, in Perth, that's just a completely different country within the country, I guess. I keep the bad jokes up for Scandinavia. <laughs> Brisbane, my city, will be host of the Olympics in 2032. Oh, that's nice. That The summer or the winter Olympics? Well, I guess it's Australia, so it should be the summer Olympics. Three time zones across Australia. Well, that's already saying something about its size. I mean, I can travel west to east through like three or four countries before I get into a different time zone. And you have three different time zones in your own country. So interesting. I think, yeah, our guard tower is ready. Now we can, here we can see the security level and the circle again. If we add more people to it, the circle will start to grow. Right now we have the uh, medium security level, or we have the low security level actually. We need to get some leather to get up to the medium security level. So these houses will now have low security. We need medium to upgrade our houses even further. So we'll have to make sure that we get leather somehow. Now we do have cows and we do have hides. So all we need to do is get into tanning. Now we recently unlocked that. So let's take a look at that and see where the tanning is, which is right here. It produces leather, that's good. We need hides and salt. Now we don't have salt yet, so let's invest in a salt pond. Can we fit that somewhere here? Yes, we can. Let's build a salt pond. And once that is done, we can build the tanner. Oh, that's a bit big. All right, I have an idea. Let's remove the salt pond. That's easy. Let's build the tanner here first, because now we have the space for it. And then we'll just build the salt pot next to it. So here we have the heights. Here we have the salt. And here we have the tannery suit. And then we can start to get leather. That we can transport here. Then we get better security. So there's even these little production circles. That you have to get through a production change. Which is nice. Um, especially in the beginning of the game. It's just pretty easy. Putting down the farms and the houses. But later in game. As you progress further in time. That's basically the whole idea. You get to the point. To actually have to setting up production chains. And things like that. So that's what I really love about this game. Of course the music is great. The graphics are very nice. But the whole idea behind the game. And how you progress. And how things move along. Are also really nice. Look at this temple by the way. We still need almost half of the bricks that it has to use. But uh, it's already starting to take shape. Looking really nice. I enjoy it. And I hope this...
grain because that's how you pay your state workers. So that's what we're aiming for right now. Wifey is famous. <laughs> yeah, it really shows how vast Australia is. It's also interesting. There's like a handful of very, very big countries in the world, like the US, Canada, Russia, uh, China, India, and uh, Australia, I guess. There's a lot more smaller nations. Look at the detailing on the salt pit. It's 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 interesting. I like it. You can actually see the workers busy there. Here we get our tanner. Oh, there's so much to this game. What do you think about the game Roadhog? I know you hate those uh, those little grid builders. Well, this for sure ain't a grid builder. You can just uh, do anything you want. Of course, when you zone the houses, they are kind of like in a grid. But you can even move that around if you want to. And you can make these uh, weird line grids, like put them sideways and stuff. So I wonder how you feel about a game like this. We have the potter up. So now we are starting to create some pottery. Which is good, because in the pottery, we can keep the beer. Is it worth growing a variety of crops? Not yet, because right now we are just aiming for uh, feeding everyone. Soon enough, uh, we'll need to get flax, for instance, to get access to some types of clothing. And we need sesame later on, too. So right now, it's not really that much worth, because we don't have a use for flax yet. Later on, we will get different types of uh, goods. Another thing we'll soon get is another uh, animal pasture, but we'll put in sheep for wool, because we also need wool for clothing at some point. Actually, I might go for that right now, because they still have to build it. Then we have to buy um, a few pieces of animal, and they have to start reproducing. So I guess building a very big sheep pasture can be really nice. Let's go with that. Thanks for the suggestion. That's a good one. Great question, Richie. Now I remember that. What enemies are you going to face? Um, I don't know. Probably myself. Not paying enough attention and, and totally screwing up the game. That's probably the biggest enemy of this game. Um, but uh, to be honest, I have come up to most of these researchers already. But that's how far I've gotten in time. So I don't know if there will actually be things like raid attacks or whatever. So... Um, I honestly don't know if there will be any attacks or things like that. But I don't think so. I don't think there's actually those types of enemies in it. It's just dealing with the pandemics and making sure that you pay everybody, that you have enough food and things like that. That's what matters in this game right now. I live on the coast. I have family in Longreach, which is the center of Queensland in Australia. Just a nine-hour drive. Wow, that's a long drive to say hi to the family. <laughs> From the south of Holland to the north, three and a half hours by car. Too far for most Dutchies. Yeah, if in Holland we have to drive like one and a half hours to visit family, people are already starting to complain that it's so far away because usually everything is so close. But if you guess if you live in Australia, having to drive two and a half hours to get to the first doctor is probably... Uh, not an unthinkable thing, and people are more used to traveling distances than we are. I guess that's a thing. Do I see? Why do I see a grid then? Oh, that's just my autism. I guess I just have to build in grids and make things look that way. But uh, yeah. Yeah, the mechanics are good. Graphics could be more interesting. I think so too. Although I think if you really pay close attention, graphics are already a long way in. I think, I mean, look at the tree. I think this tree looks maybe even better than the ones in Patron or something like that. And the amount of detailing and stuff put into the houses, these little areas here. I think there's already a lot to the graphics, but you have to zoom in for it. At no way does this ever look like pixely or something like that. So I think it's already nice. Why should you need wall and defense if it's not be enemies? Well... The game is, is, it is version 1.0, so I think that's something they might want to add later on. But the whole purpose of this game is to build an ancient city, like the Sumerians did. And of course they did use walls and stuff, so we are doing that now too. Um, but I don't think the whole purpose of this game is to make this about war and defending. It's about city building and, and thriving with a little society that starts 
farming for the first time. I guess that's the whole idea of the game. Um, so maybe it could be in it. I hope there's also an option to turn it off then so that you can just focus on having fun with the city building. But maybe they'll add it later. I don't know. Oh, look at this stone temple now. It's done. It's really cool. I mean, just take a look at this. There's statues here. There's this nice brickwork. There's some mosaics on it. There's nice plants and stuff. I really enjoy this. I think it looks good. But um, I guess, uh, Gordon, I guess, Cooper, it's a good question about the enemies. But uh, yeah, I think the focus is on the city building. But that's just what I uh, think and feel. All right, we can add some stuff to the top, by the way, if you want to track some of your stuff. I really now want to track bricks and beer so that I know what we can build. Uh, and especially beer is important now because beer is a special currency. So if we want our warehouse to be 80% more productive, we can give them beer. And it will be more productive and work better. Because you pay them beer as a salary. So um, I want to track how much beer we have. So that I know that we can spend it on more buildings. And make them work more productively. Which is interesting. Netherlands would fit in Queensland 42 times. And that's just Queensland. That's not the US. That's just Queensland. Interesting. I could get into it. Oh well that's nice road dog. I was... Not suggesting that, by the way, but I was just curious to your opinion. You always give a fair and straight opinion about whether you like it or not. And I think you're you're a, a good critique. So um, if you like it, then it has to probably be quite a good game. Otherwise, you won't like it. So uh, it says something about the game. If you don't dismiss it straight away. <laughs> All right, 20 beer, 25 beer. Very nice. We need pottery and grain. So we have to take the grain into account. We can see the numbers turning red now. That's a problem. Um, why is that, by the way? Because we should have had... Plan oh, they're still harvesting. Okay. So, yeah, the numbers turned red now for the grain. We do get big amounts, but it's also falling harder now. Probably due to all the extra state workers that we have. Plus the brewery is using the crane. So having the extra farms up will be very helpful soon enough. I guess we might even need more. Let's just build two extra, get some fields going. Have to rotate it, yes. And oh, we can build another field here. 25 beers, just enough for Roadhog. Well, it's 150 now, so it should last the night. <laughs> From Malmö, South Sweden, to Kiruna, North Sweden, is road distance 1,841 kilometers. Oh, well, that takes quite some time. And I guess in Sweden, you have to account for hills and stuff and snow and things. So it can be quite a lengthy drive, I guess, even though it's like 1,800 kilometers. It could still take you days because of the snow and things like that, I guess. I mean, I'm not sure, but I guess that could be the thing. <laughs> What's everyone else to drink? Well, we'll see. Right now we're going to put this to sheep. We don't have sheep yet, but as soon as we have enough grain again, I'm going to buy some more. Um, but right now I'm going to save it a bit because I do want, don't want to run out next time. Let's see what else we're going to research now. I think we're going to go for... Oh, transport cars is really interesting. That will help us to transport even more. But let's do the fast research for first. So that we can get some extra state workers. We're getting close to the max again. So you really need those researches to, do, to be done. We can see now that about 33% of our population consists of kids. 17% is private workers. And all the rest are state workers. 
Um, that might also be an issue that we don't have enough people to do all the private jobs and provide food for all the people. Ooh, we can see now these are the tier 3 buildings. Level 3 buildings. So they're upgrading even further. Looking better and better. They now need a brick wall to upgrade. High security and high health. So that's going to be a big step. But uh, this is nice. Look at these buildings. Kind of have like the uh, Pharaoh game feel. The old Pharaoh game, of course. How many bricks do we have? 120. I think it's time to start upgrading the walls too. Now the easy thing is you can just go to your walls and then start selecting a bunch of walls. So now we've selected this whole bunch. We hit this upgrade button and now it will start upgrading uh, this whole selection of walls. We could of course do all the walls at the same time but I think that's a bit too much. So we're just going to start with this. Um, now there's probably not enough builders in or, or there's only five in there. Okay, that's good. Because they're not really building anything. But uh, let's see. They should now start to upgrade this. And I wonder what it will look like. We can also see that we now have leather. And this is now set to medium security. That's great. I like it. My record drive with the truck from the Netherlands to the North Cape and back was 10 days. Oh, wow. That's long. From my chair by the door to the bar, about 13 feet. <laughs> How long does that take you? Uh, it's actually really starting to look like a city now, I guess. Thanks anyway, by the way. It's nice to have a compliment like that. Yeah, it looks really great, I think. And it's a fun game. Alright, what I would like to do now is go to this storage, for instance, and tell them to be more productive it's now turning green and what you do with a salary is better salaries reduce the damage spoilage level so now that we give them a better salary we can see that from one bar not red it goes down to two bars not red so all the food in here should spoil slower which is a great thing of course because that means that we can keep more grain in there now, I think most of the grain is still in the far or where is it actually it's not in there where did they put all my grain oh there's a lot of food in here lots of grain in, in this one why would they put it in this one anyway we're going to give this one beer so that this will spoil less quickly I guess that's a is done let's get to wheeled transports now it will take a year and 10 months because we have only a few researchers so it could be very beneficial to our town to expand this building the council of elders to get more researchers in so i think oh we can't expand it that way why is that i don't know actually 
Oh, that's interesting. I thought we would be able to. Well, we'll go this way. Let's get some extra elders in there so we can get more research done. That should speed things up. Although I'm also really hoping that with this will really bring in the amount of extra food that we need. Otherwise, we'll need a few more farms. I think we can then go farming on this side of town. Oh, we need a canal here first to make this land fertile, by the way. Oh, that could be something. Let's take a look at our stone walls. We can see that these are still under construction. They're really nice brick walls. But there's also some sections already done. And look at these colorings. I really like this coloring. This looks amazing to me. Love the styling. Yeah, this game has great style. I love this game. All right, more and more pieces get built. 16 bricks in there so they can completely finish it. I like it. I like it. We'll finish. We'll get back to the wall soon once a few more sections are done. Let's focus on the people. We now have 16% private workers. Only 134. We have one person without a job. Is that one just lazy or don't we have a job for that one person? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. At least we have a lot of nice looking houses. This one is still level 2. Oh, it has all the uh, edits to it. It's just not upgrading. Okay. We have 281 pieces of pottery. Oh, that should be plenty to brew more beer, I guess. Oh, I wonder why we aren't doing that. I like the way everything auto upgrades. Well, at least the houses and stuff do. That's true. Um, and I guess it's also nice that you can really manually set which buildings you want to upgrade by giving them a better salary. So that you can really keep control of that. I like that too. So I guess all in all, this is just a great game. One of the other things we need to start researching is warehouses. Now we can't do that yet because we have to get arithmetic first and then you can do the buttress. So if you see a line like this, you also have to get this research. And once all the lines are in the green, then you can get the research done. So that's taking some time. So I guess for now we can just build a normal warehouse here. Let's rotate it so the entrance is facing this way. Now we'll build it right here. Just to make sure that they can store all of these grain in here. And if we give this beer, then it will be reduced spoilage. There's a lot of spoilage in the farm, so a lot of it will go to waste. So, uh...
so uh, I'll be quite busy. But we'll continue for a few more minutes because we have so much fun and chat is so amazingly nice. And of course, thanks so much if you take the time to be here and to watch this. And um, feel free to just lurk around. Thanks to all the chatters. It's amazing to have you all here. You are such a big part of the channel and you're also what makes it such a nice place. If you have hit that like button, thanks so much. If you have not done so, please do so because it helps me in the YouTube algorithms. I'm still a very small YouTuber, of course, and it would be nice if we can grow a bit. If you hit that subscribe button, thanks so much. That's also a big help. And uh, I just appreciate all the help and support I get, however big or small it is. And I get a lot of help and support from all of you. You're all so nice. Sorry, I've been kind of absent, but I've been keeping an eye when I could. No problem, no problem. And uh, yeah, wife is going off to bed, so I'll be off to the uh, end of stream soon, because then she can really sleep and she uh, doesn't have to hear my voice. Of course, I have a sleeping voice, so she could fall asleep with it. But um, no, I'm just going to uh, call this an end soon. And a special warm thanks to all you Aussies who are now able to watch the stream. It was really nice and fun to have you here. And uh, to hear some nice things about Australia and the time difference and things like that. So that was really nice. And uh, I hope one day you can all catch another stream. That would be even more amazing. Enjoy your time in Spain. I hope you have plenty of time to do that, uh, Gordon. And uh, to all others in Australia. Enjoy your day there. It's already daytime almost. I hope the feeding is going well, Blake. And... Uh, I hope to see you all soon again. Yet again, thanks so much. And uh, next week we will continue this little village. I had fun. Thanks so much. Take care, stay healthy, and see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>